In this video we're going to be looking at combinational logic circuits. And combinational logic circuit basically is known as a decision making circuit. And they're no different from a collection of gates that we've seen before. They have a particular property where their output or outputs are only determined by the logical function of their current, that's important, inputs. Alright, so key point here is there is no memory. Okay, versus the sequential logic circuits, which we'll be looking at in the next video. So no memory in a combinational logic circuit. And so they're made up of the basic elements that we've seen so far, the basic gates. All right, so I could draw a box like this. One or more inputs coming in, one or more outputs coming out. And this would be a combinational logic circuit. All right, so these outputs are a function of the inputs only. All right, not in any way related to anything in the previous case. An example of what a combinational logic circuit might look like. All right, this one's got three inputs, A, B, C, and one output, Q. All right, combinational logic circuit. So they're nothing more than a collection of gates that we've seen so far. All right, it's just a fancy name for saying this is a decision-making circuit um, and that it has no particular memory associated with it. In terms of the types of circuits, or the types of logic circuits that we can divide up in under the combinational logic circuit heading, we can divide that very roughly into arithmetic and logic functions. data transmission functions and code converters. And I say roughly because different books and different people may divide these up in slightly different ways. All right, but advantage of these would be things like, sorry, examples would be adders, subtractors, multiplexers under the data transmission, and encoders, and then specific code converters like binary, BCD, seven segment, and so forth. So these are all examples of combinational logic circuits. If we take a look at one of these in particular, the multiplexer, easiest way to think of a multiplexer is to view your microcontroller and it has, and I'm just going to draw four for simplicity here, ADC0, ADC1, ADC2, ADC3, so and all the rest of them. So you've got multiple ADC pins coming in and the multiplexer's job, this is the symbol for a multiplexer, is to take all of those inputs and then actually connect it to a single ADC. So your microcontroller actually only has one ADC, but the multiplexer basically acts as a switch that can switch to that one, or this one, or this one, or this one. All right, and so it allows you to take one input and connect it to the ADC. All right, so you could sample one of them, then switch to the next one, sample the next, and so forth in a fashion like that. Right, so that's a multiplexer. 
uh, the way that we could uh, actually draw a multiplexer we could do something like this so we have two NAND gates connected to another NAND gate and oh, that one goes in like that, that one goes in like that so input 0, input 1, our output Q and A or sometimes it might be called select, a select line and the way it works is that basically you've got, if we were to draw a tooth table for this so we'll have the select line I0, I1 and our output I might just do it in the normal order like that the select line selects between the various inputs to provide which one goes on the output so for example if I was to fill in this table we'll do it in binary as we do normally All right I'm just going to do this twice we'll see why in a second right in this case when the select line is low versus when the select line is high we get slightly different operation for this particular circuit so when the select line is low we get a zero here this is always a good way to how to work out these circuits I naught if we do the first row would be zero as well which would give us a one here right zero and zero being an and would give us a zero here through a not gives us a one so we get a one there zero here gives us a one here one zero that would be zero that would be one this would be one here and we get a zero on the output we'd have a one there for an AND gate All right so you can draw your ones and zeros working your way through to fill these out but basically what you'll see is that when select is low it is taking what is on the I1 input and putting it onto the output versus when the select line is high it is taking what's on the I0 input and putting that onto the output so we're just basically switching whatever state is on the corresponding line that we've selected onto the output so remembering draw your zeros and ones as you go through remembering your truth tables for your gates and it'll make it easier to fill in the operation of such a truth table uh, another common uh, combinational circuit is the digital encoder and basically the job of the encoder is to take some sort of data inputs uh, and convert it into some sort of encoded form so data through the encoder into an encoded form all right an encoded form e.g. binary is an encoded form so let's say we've got what's known as one hot where we might have d3 d2 d1 d0 and our outputs q1 q0 and those correspond to our data inputs and our coded outputs and if we were to do something like this where we have an encoded sorry a data input data on this side right and we wanted to say basically if one is in the d0 input and everything else is zero then 
we convert that to binary zero. If we've got a one in the D1 column, binary one, binary two, binary three, and so forth. All right, so this is the job of the encoded. It's to take data in whatever form you've got and convert it into an encoded format, such as binary, just as in this particular example. And this is what we know as a four by two encoder. Four inputs to two encoded outputs. Obviously, if we have this situation where we've got two ones, all right, we then have a problem. All right? This type of encoder uh, will end up having a problem where the output will be unknown. It's undefined for that particular uh, situation. The way we get around this is what's known as turning this into a priority encoder, where we actually give priority to uh, an order to our inputs. So what we do is we replace these with x's so that even if d3 is high and everything else could be high or low, we'll always get this output because d3 has the highest priority. All right, and then as we work our way back up, D3 is low and D2 is high, doesn't matter what D1 or D0 is, we'll always get this output. So a priority coder fixes the problem where you might have more than one input high, um, as per this particular example. Other examples where you might see uh, combinational logic circuits. A display decoder, it's a very common one, where you'll have Ding, 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 ding. Corresponding number of lines to your seven segment display. And you would want to drive that from, for example, if we've got seven lines, that would be two to the three equals eight. So we could have three data lines coming in, and we'll decode. that into a seven segment corresponding data. So I should probably call this, this is the encoded side. We'll decode that into seven segment data. So you can use three lines to control seven segments. Right. Very common use of a, a combinational logic circuit built from nothing but and not or and so forth all right so just the basic gates that we've looked at so far all right so quick summary again combinational logic circuits are decision making circuits where their outputs are only determined by the logical function of their current inputs logical function means there's no memory in this whatever's present on a b and c based on the logical function inside that circuit, then the output will have the corresponding value. Right? It doesn't rely on any other external or previous events. It's just what's on the input. Right? And that's what this equation here states. There's different ways we can divide this up between arithmetic, data, and co-converters. Very roughly, that's uh, one way you could divide it up. I've given you examples such as a multiplexer. And this is how you would could create a multiplexer. Um, and a practical application of it where it's used inside, for example, our microcontroller. It's not exactly like that, but it's very similar in the way that that could be used. Right? This multiplexer obviously can support uh, analog voltages coming in here, and therefore into here, whereas this circuit can only support digital. But it's the same type of principle. And the corresponding table showing that the select pin uh, is used to select which input goes to which output. We had a look at the digital encoder and the modification to make it a priority encoder and showing that we go from data through the encoder to an encoded form. And then the display decoder, which is similar again, which takes encoded data, decodes it, and in this case lights up each of the corresponding segments in our seven segment display.